So some of these uh, conservation laws are an absolute pathetic joke. Let me give you an example. I'm going to show you an excerpt from a particular area which is called the 300M Committee. Okay, And they are basically setting uh, parcels of land aside for recreational pursuits and uh, recreational access. And they are, uh, as far as I'm uh, uh, aware of, they're basically operating only within um, the Mashpee area. They might also have something also in Falmouth and, and a few other areas as well. I actually think they also have something in Barnstable as well. But don't quote me on that. I'm going to show you an excerpt that how pathetic some of these people are. And um, this is an excerpt from a particular uh, nature trail parking area. And basically what the sign says that and bear in mind, this is an area that has a lot of red oaks and even white oaks and really wood that I consider absolutely prized for some I build and for what it's worth, I did not acquire any of the wood from these areas. I uh, purchased it and acquired it from other resources. But just to show you the kind of people that these are, so what you're going to see in the next clip is that suppose that a person, hypothetically, wanted to go and totally clear cut all the trees within that whole area of which the committee uh, oversees. And let's say that you also used a motorized vehicle for that purpose. And by the way, I also want to say I'm not like uh, of that element of people like a lot of the working class who just totally come and like a bull in a china shop and try to destroy uh the uh you know your tr you know trees and nature i'm actually of those people uh, kind of like in agartha and you know new berlin and those areas uh where legend says that if you want to remove a tree you have to actually uh, ask the tree for its permission and some of those areas so just want to be very clear about that but I'm just using this as a matter of reference that if a person wanted to come over and completely clear cut all the trees of which the committee oversees and also enter with a motor vehicle, the most that they could actually charge you would be a $300 fine per offense. 300 bucks, or say $600 for that matter. And you could get acres and acres of wood. So all the trees and everything of which this committee is in a custodial uh, position to oversee, to them is only worth about $300. And that just to show you that conservation committees really are not generally, at least the ones in this area, really interested in, in, in conservation. Because if they were, and if they were in my book, I would charge somewhere like at least $30,000 per tree or per offense. But then, of course, such would probably get contested. And so they try to be more realistic. It's not like littering, you know, $10,000 per incident. You see those signs out there, too. Not in these places, but I've seen them and you probably saw them also on the side of the roads. And so really, I'm making this video partly as a, uh, as a way to critique, but also for us schmucks who are basically going to be one day uh, priced out by your particular uh, belief systems and just making rents just so unaffordable. Like I receive basically SSI and from what I get, I couldn't afford to live anywhere other than in my van or trailer or just basically out on the street. And for that matter, uh, areas like I'm going to show you, those areas I'm going to squat and I'm going to be undeterred, completely undeterred if I'm trespassing, because the most you can slap me with is a $300 fine. 
And suppose that I were to purchase and somehow procure an estate here, which easily can cost me a million dollars. So let's say I would have to front the capital in order to purchase such an estate. Then I would have to add, uh, besides all the regulations like Title V, which is for septic systems, which in this area can be egregious amounts of money. And uh, on top of that, I would have to be, uh, you know, I'd be subject to property tax, which really can be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, easily for a house of a formidable estate, easily, you know, $4,000 a year, easily. And sometimes, if, you know, and oftentimes even more, especially if there's a, a fairly large parcel of land adjacent to it. And so uh, with that, and then on top of it, you still would be, uh, you know, you know, liable for any bylaw violations, which obviously a homeowner is more of a sitting duck than just a schmuck living in his car and living in his trailer, even if it's a, a post, uh, post and beam uh, oak trailer, as I have, completely uh, festooned with all the moderations of life and uh, everything in a diminutive package everything from having uh, solar, uh, 7,000 watts of solar, nearly so, lithium ion phosphate batteries, um, telecommunications uh, through, you know, internet um, uh, and redundancy, uh, satellite communications, satellite internet, uh, Starlink, um, you know, basically a jacuzzi bathtub, uh, and everything that you could ever imagine in a very collapsible unit, which can be as small as six by 10 feet and expandable to basically infinity or somewhere around 650 square feet. And then on top of it, the van and all of that. And so really a person like me is undeterred by your policies because they really are just a slap on the wrist. Now, if you had a house and you actually had a house on top of that, you would still have to have maintenance and property insurance. And so just like maintenance where people around here, they really go, you know, and outdo themselves. You'd be running probably another, oh, say about, uh, say about uh, 90 or 100,000 on a 30 year mortgage for maintaining your house. So really, you're running somewhere, and I counted this on that million dollar property, you're looking somewhere around $65,000 a year. That's enough to get a $300 fine for 200 and was like 213 times, if my math and my memory serves me correct. And that's uh, really, I can see, you know, after probably one or two violations, I would just pack everything up because my system is designed that I can pack everything up in 20 minutes and just move my ass off, you know, to another area or just out of town. And uh, so really, uh, and plus that 300 would probably get contested anyway. So um, really, this is the reason why I prefer to squat and just be a, and, and occupy uh, land and use land, uh, public land, um, and is also private property open for public use and, uh, use them to my heart's content and no trespassing is not a deterrent for me. Absolutely not a deterrent. And, uh, in fact, I'm investing quite a bit of your taxpayers money in building my mobile adobe so that I can, uh, really squat wherever my heart, uh, so, uh, so leads me. And um, really, in many ways, it's because I am price, priced out because in a couple of years, um, even even as we speak, for what I get in, in benefits, I could never afford to actually live at a place. And the waiting lists like Section 8 and all that take forever. And plus, if you have a Section 8 place, what do you offer? I mean, most of the places, I mean, that's another thing. If you offer housing and you just want to stick a person on a cot, okay, a cot is not a, a, an ideal place where you, where you, let's say, want to stick your girlfriend, right? So if I want to entertain and I want to, let's say, have company over, it's not really ideal to invite someone over to the shelter, right? And uh, 
also, if you offer housing, for me, it's not going to be a home unless I have my solar system, my panels, my tools, my equipment, my family, really. Because for a guy like me, I don't get along with humans very well. All right. To me, the little tiny bit of sawdust that comes off the trailer during my build is worth more than the lives of many of the people who are who are who I would even consider my neighbors. So really, I don't uh, I'm not a, a person, a very social human being. I'm pretty antisocial overall. And uh, this video is really just trying to bring more people in my cosmos who are like minded and are really on the fringe of society. And so I just wanted to point that out there that it is important and imperative that those sort of people are isolated. I know I've placed some of my videos also on age restriction and I'm just testing out different algorithms and different things in order to discover the unholy grail um, being able to really uh, generate a lot of uh, attention and really for my cause and for my movement and more on that later. But uh, anyway, just uh, putting it out there and um, just telling you that uh, whatever you try with uh, all your conservation efforts, they really are just a slap on the wrist. And the reason why a lot of homeless people are not interested in actually accepting help is because what you offer is not really practical for a person who, let's say, has like one fellow I remember up in Wareham. He was up there at the Walmart parking lot and he had a large like a 35 foot pace arrow motorhome. He had a classic car. He had a pickup truck, a motorcycle, two car trailers, one in a pretty dilapidated state, several project vehicles. He even had an old uh, fire, uh, what is it, a fire truck, like, um, like a pumper truck, I think, as a classic one. And all of this stuff, for whatever reason, he probably lost his place and he moved everything to the to the Walmart parking lot, which is, by the way, in my opinion, kind of a real chutzpah, real abuse of the system. But you see this in a lot of the homeless camps that a lot of people like us, who especially didn't really have, and humans were not a strong point in their life, sort of like the late Bill Hewitt, I might add, you know, PowerStrokeHelp.com, who passed away at the spry age of 57. And briefly for a time when I did own a Power Stroke, a 2002 F350, 4x4. And so basically uh, just point out that these sort of things do happen. And when you, as a, as a coalition for homeless, let's say, an advocacy group, you try to get people into into housing you fail to really uh, you must remember that it is very important for people to be able to fully express themselves for a person like myself just having a room somewhere a room for rent it's not gonna do it okay I need a place for my solar panels okay all my tools all my equipment I won't hold a job a work or be a, you know, a responsible member of society. I'm a bum and I have all my tools and all my equipment and that is my family. I need to have a workshop. So like if you wanted to offer housing, you would have to give me at least five acres of land. Uh, you would have to give me two fireplaces, a wood stove, three bedroom, basement, attic, a formidable estate of let's say 1800 square feet. And I would have to own it in order to own it completely of the backs of the taxpayers. And unless you can procure that and take that into account when you try to offer housing services, really, I'd much rather just be on the street and, you know, even a th random $300 fine. And bear in mind, a lot of them in other communities are way, way cheaper and way, way less than, than, than even this. Is just absolutely, I mean... There's no point. Why would I want to pay 65 grand a year, even if I had it, to basically be subjugated to all the rules and bylaw regulations and zoning and all of it and front all this capital when I can simply be a bum on the street, legally speaking, anyway, 
and ha can have a uh, can have all of it. And the most you can slap me with is probably a random three hundred dollar fine out of the blue, which probably is going to get contested anyway because I have all the time to pursue those kind of activities. And I actually do a lot of things, sort of like First Amendment auditors do. I have a particular fellow down in. Uh, um, we're not associated, but I watch him, and it's a Cape Cod cop watcher. He's up there in, in Hyannis. I think he just recently got uh, a trans, uh, what was it? Uh, he got trespassed from a public sidewalk uh, for accessing the uh, Bank of America from a public sidewalk. He just got uh, trespassed. So, yeah, there's all kinds of people down here on the Cape. And this was down in Barnstable, down on INO Road. That new Bank of America they built up there. And so, really, when there's this much overstep and societal overstep, where you have certain people who have just vastly more than others. And bear in mind, this schmuck, he, has a, he owns a house here on the Cape, okay? So he's not like me, who just doesn't have those kind of resources. Um, at least, that's not what I get uh, month to month my check. And so, really... Uh, when I do build this up in my van and trailer, don't be surprised that you're going to see more of me uh, squatting, perhaps in your backyard, because I'm very well versed in the laws and the regulations. And the way that they are written, especially in blue states and not really uh, states that have a lot of uh, firepower, you know, like uh, CCW states and concealed carry states, and especially if you keep on voting Democrat, uh, don't be surprised if I become your kind of uh, surrogate neighbor, because that may actually happen. And you'll probably find me more in some of these areas as uh, I'm going to show you. So anyway, if you like my videos, you can rate, come, subscribe. And if you like this kind of content, I'm definitely going to be posting more of it. If you don't like this content, by all means, uh, let me know. Do not stay in the shadows in the background because I will still put out more and churn out more of this content. In fact, there are various adult venues where I will probably be posting my content because I have no issue paying any amount of money. And this, by the way, goes to all you YouTube screeners who use algorithms to prevent and shadow ban all of my comments. So if I want to write something about my past or something as a reference point and you shadow ban my comments, like I had to post in the video previously that I put out there, then shame on you because you're costing yourself a lot of advertising revenue because I'm willing to put behind my brand a considerable amount and a considerable investment. Remember that when I'm legally homeless, I only need about 200 to $250 a month to actually live on, plus food and food that I get from the garbage and the dumpsters. And so for that matter, I have a huge surplus that at least, uh, especially in low CPM countries and, and so on and so forth, I could be actually driving traffic to my channel. But if you continue these sort of things like shadow banning my comments and keeping me in the background where I do not have, you know, the exposure that I seek for creating a brand of my own, then you're going to miss out on a lot of revenue. Yes, you, YouTube and the human uh, screeners, uh, there was a video, uh, the modern uh, day slaves of the tech, tech age. You should watch that video. It's a documentary and where a portion of it where besides, you know, modern day jobs paying about 30 cents an hour, you're going to see people who are actually working and uh, screening out uh, comments from people like us. And even worse, I have a particular Brian from Heimpeck uh, uh, Vlogs, I think it is, where he had multiple screens open and some of his comments got... Um, a person commented and a person got a alternate version. He got an alternate version of a comment that was actually being placed on an alternate screen under possibly and likely an additional account. And just, just to show you that things like this do happen. And if you continue these antics, I will take my money or your tax dollars and I'm going to invest them elsewhere. Do you understand? 
because I'm willing to put several hundred dollars a month for advertising revenue to grow this brand and this channel. And if you are not up to the task and you want to screen me out, then I'm not going to be able in such a position to be able to do so. And somebody else will receive my ad revenue. So anyway, that's what I'm going to put out there. And uh, really, uh, this is my brand. And uh, I just hope that uh, you don't do the same things, the same antics you used to do. I had a whole swath of videos at one point and I deleted everything. I backed up and deleted them to uh, protest censorship. And uh, these days I'm really trying to redefine myself. I had a original brand called Beg Bucks. And um, I think the, the best that I got out of it was, uh, you know, a page in the uh, venerated Encyclopedia Dramatica by some of my trolls. And so really, uh, I just have to put that out there. But at any rate, um, if you do like this video, thumb it up. If you don't like it, thumb it down. Um, as long as I get uh, traffic, uh, that's fine. And if you know something about squatters and squatters' rights, be bear in mind that this channel is a, um, a variation of it. I think you people, some of you, especially those of you who, are, let's say, you know, are not seeking and raising a family or anything, but you actually have, you know, you're pretty much single or you're just a couple and uh, you're not interested in, you know, planting any long term roots and you're OK living in a, in a Vargo in a as a vagabond lifestyle, pretty much um, sort of like a gypsy. Just bear in mind that uh, for us roamers, even if it's just a few hundred feet, uh, there's really no point in paying $65,000 a year for something that we can have for probably somewhere around $3,000 a year, plus maybe an occasional slap on the wrist.